Hey folks, welcome back to Portable Gaming, and welcome back to ETS2. Continuing our trip, we're going to be heading, I guess, down south, out of Scandinavia, and into the Baltic region today. So let's take a look, see what we can haul. I did, if you're looking right there, you can see I pulled one axle off the Scania, pulled the steering axle off, and took it to a 6x4. Didn't make any other changes, same motor, 580 brake horsepower, and left the cab the same. Pulled a couple of fog lights off, and driving lights, simplify things a little bit there. Right, so we're looking to head south. I said we're looking to head south. No, well that's a quick trip, and that's going to the same place, but it's a dolly trailer, so I think this is going to be our best bet for now. And that map scale, I don't want to say it's off or anything, but it's uh, 318 kilometers. It's a 15 to 20 minute trip. Let's do it. And what is it? 17 tons. Not too bad at all. Let's do this one. If it goes quickly, then we'll maybe do another one. Right, just right around the corner. And I did just wake up. We slept through the night. Oh, definitely need to get fuel before we leave town. And in fact, I'm going to just get fuel right now. Get in there. Sorry. Right in there. Okay, let's get fuel now. Get that over with. And then we'll go pick up our job. Try not to oh dear. Try not to hit that DAF. So I don't know if our fuel tanks got bigger or smaller or stayed the same when we went to the 6x4. I think 440 plus what we had in there. Take a look when we... Seven hundred liters, twenty two hundred kilometers, it says. I don't necessarily trust that thing, but it's a start. You're right. So we'll get around the corner here. Pick up our job and get headed south. And you know we're we pulled out the Grimes Frosty mod and now we're just running the Grimes Mild Winter mod. No physics effect, no snow on the streets, no snow anywhere, really. It just pulls the, the leaves off the trees, and things are a little bit grayer. Days are a little bit shorter. All right. And I did, I've really been, put the curb there, nice. I've really been trying to drive in daylight and I think the fact that we're this far north and I'm running these these winter mods has given us some pretty short days. So it seems like we're always driving at night and I I don't know if I should apologize for that or not. I mean I I like driving at night. I don't know how you can see, it might just be all black for you. These are terrible when I review them and I do review them before I post them and then I take a quick peek at them again after I post them just to see how the the YouTube conversion does uh, not in there next one I 
Oh, <laughs> there's your problem. Driving around with no lights on. Oh, folks, it's early here. It's about 7 a.m. It's a bit early for me, and I really have not been sleeping well lately. So. So I'm not trying to drive at night, although I like it. Uh, I personally like driving at night, but I don't know how, how good it is for you watching. All right. And it may give us a choice of trailer. If it does, I'm thinking of taking tandems again. We had good luck. No, doesn't matter. No. No options available. All right. Right there. Maybe around here somewhere. There it is. Now we did go to six by four. And then, you know, our plan is when we get back to France, we're going to swap this truck out for a Madster MAN 8x4. Madster MAN 8x4 and we'll trade in the MAN that we have now but we'll take this back to a normal gap there All right. take this back to a 4x2 take it back to its original setup probably put the 480 horsepower motor back in and I think that's appropriate for a 4x2 and then we'll drive that MAN around a little bit and we've also got the regular Scania RJL Streamline. Reverse that. The RJL Scania Streamline uh, set up with a lift axle. Uh, so a, a 6x2 lift axle and I think that's a, a good looking rig too. And what else do we have? We have that little Mercedes Antos. Uh, which is, that's a day trip truck. I think of it as a day trip truck. We've got a DAF XF105. Uh, the 50k version with some of the DAF DLC goodies on it. That's a good looking truck. And I think that's it. What is that? Five? Two Scania, an MAN, a DAF, and a Mercedes. Yeah, that's all five. Okay. Man, there are cops everywhere in Finland tonight. Don't try any funny business. Right. I don't know that I feel any difference in maneuverability right off the bat as far as the turning circle on the truck or is it fighting me any more or less. Uh, hard to say at the moment. But I'll keep you posted. We may we may swap this truck back to 4x2 when we get down to maybe not Italy but you know, Czech Republic, Hungary on the way to Italy right around the corner there 
we may swap back to 4x2 and call those last trips day trips. And we still have the sleeper to get us out of. Scandinavia and Eastern Europe, where I think we'd be taking longer trips and spending more time sleeping in the truck rather than hotels, versus Europe, you know, Western Europe, where I think of more day trips, staying more in hotels. Just a thought. I mean, there's no there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just a game. Nobody cares. But that's how I'm playing it. So, all right, game seems to be running smoothly. We're rock steady at 60 FPS. Lock in the cruise control, and let's get on down the road here and get this delivered. Start making our way home. I feel like I'm getting OBS sorted out. I feel like I'm getting, uh, you know, the first, first few times that I used OBS, I wouldn't say that it was overwhelming, but it definitely, you, you're going to spend some time on, on forums sorting out OBS. And the reason is, it, it's, you've got several things happening at once now. You've got your graphics card rendering your game, and then you've also got it capturing, essentially, and, and recording. And you know, as far as what, what settings you want, well, just getting everything to work together step one, just getting OBS to see your graphics card, getting it to capture a game specifically, and then adding to that you know, things like quality of the sound, frame rate, frame rate compatibility as far as you know, 60 FPS versus 30 FPS, and vertical sync, and uh, a lot of other variables, all of which affect everything else. So it's not, it's not a question of just having your game render as it always has and then you adjust OBS to fit that. Uh, you may have to adjust the way you're rendering your game to work well with OBS. But every time you adjust one thing, you need to correspondingly adjust something on the other side in both directions. And it's just a refining process. You know, you tweak this a little bit, go back to the other side, tweak that a little bit. Just go back and forth a few times. Well, a few times, probably 12 or 15 times. You go back and forth 12 or 15 times and at least in my case I found like I I got to a, a stasis I got to a good balance between you know, frame rate in the game and OBS does eat I think probably 5 to 8 FPS OBS will, will drop your FPS just a little bit uh, so you need to make some adjustments in in your game accordingly if you want to keep your frame rate up maybe back your graphics off a little bit uh, just all the all the usual stuff and once I got all that set up then it was sort of finding a good rhythm for the recordings themselves and I'm I'm still I mean it's definitely a work in progress I think it always will be because I, I'm really I've had some people say, man, talk about the truck more. And I think, well, I don't know what there is to say about the truck for 45 minutes to an hour. I mean, I can I can tell you we're in a Scania 164, 16-liter uh, V8, 580 brake horsepower, and oh, uh, transmission off the top of my head. I can't even remember. I could go look that up. 6x4? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I there's really not not a ton that I can say about the truck, certainly not an hour's worth. And then, you know, talking about gaming, well, I do love gaming, and I feel like there's more to say about gaming than there is to say about the truck, at least for me, a real trucker, a person who actually drives a truck for a living, could easily talk about this truck for an hour, but I cannot. So I need to kind of, kind of trend more toward talking about gaming rather than the truck. But then I also, you've heard in the videos, I also talk about myself a lot. Uh, life, you know, the universe, sorting out the problems of the world, uh, trying to. And at the same time, not getting political or talking about guns or anything heavy. Uh, 
trying not to bring the channel down and keeping it family friendly, remembering not to cuss and, you know, doing all these things. So I still don't know exactly what direction it's going in, what I want it to be. I just know I love playing video games and I thought it would be cool to kind of share that with all of you. And that's what I'm doing. Try not to get any speeding tickets this trip, so I've slowed way down. I don't think I need to slow down quite that far. But then, as soon as I say that, I'll come around the bend and there'll be a little 30 mile an hour construction zone or something. 30 kilometer per hour. Just coming off farm simulator on a British farm, so I was miles per hour over there. This truck does sound great. And the the regular RJL Scania V8 sounds even better. I think it sounds amazing. Uh, it's got the crackle. The, the DAF, I hope we get to drive that truck too. That has the open pipe sound on it. And that is amazing. Uh, when that blow off valve goes, When the blow-off on the turbo lets go on the, that DAM, great sound. All right. Leaving town. All right, back to 80. Yeah, trip's going pretty quick. And I'm wondering now, uh, you know, I, I hate to even speculate. I was starting to kind of think out loud about why we were having those crashes in Scandinavia and, you know, what was different. What didn't we have running in Iceland that we did have running in Scandinavia? I was kind of starting to think that, but like I said, I don't, I don't necessarily like to do that because just as often as not, the problem with with game crashes is going to be the way I have my mods set up and as a mod maker I realize you can't test your mod against every possible combination of maps and trucks and graphics mods and even things like you know, flare packs I've got I'm not running a flare pack right now but I'm definitely having problems with beacons And I found in a thread, I, I think I know the cause of that problem with my beacons. But the thing is, the mod that's causing it, I like it so much that I'm not getting rid of it. It's like if I have a choice between that mod and no beacons or beacons and I lose that mod, I'd rather keep that mod. So I would, I would really be reluctant to start calling out mods or calling out a, a a particular mod and say, you know, this caused a problem or this is crashing my game. Knowing that if I pulled everything out and just ran that mod by itself, it would not cause a crash. It's the combination of mods. It's like drugs. Don't do drugs, kids. And if you do, don't mix them because that's when you OD. As long as you don't mix your drugs, you'll be fine. It's when you start mixing. And I feel like mods are the same way. If you want to run one, you're almost always going to be just fine. It's when you start adding in. I think I have about 60 going right now. Which is not outrageous. You know, I don't think it is. Uh, I, I know I've heard people. I, I'm, I'm super diligent about keeping my mods updated. And keeping them in the right order and, you know, just doing everything as well as I can. Is that 50? There we go. Keeping everything in the right order and just, you know, being as diligent as I can about about being being a good custodian of my mods. And, and I hear YouTubers talk about, you know, I, I just, 
I just throw everything in a folder. Ah! I just throw everything in a folder. I don't even look. Right. Had we been going 80 there, we would have just crushed that guy. Poor woman. Could be a woman. Yeah. What are you supposed to do about that? Uh, I think the truck would have taken most of the damage. But still, what are you supposed to do about that? Ah. Oh, game. Right. Looks like we've been here before. Probably on the way up. Let me get in the, get in the slow lane here. I'm tying up the hammer lane like a bad truck driver. So yeah, I, I'm guessing, I mean, I, I have my eye on the problem, but I'm guessing if I pulled everything out and took that mod that, that I think is the problem, I'm making air quotes when I say that, if I took the mod that I think is the problem and ran it by itself, I promise it would be 100% stable. It's just, you know, when we're up in Scandinavia, we're on Scandinavia DLC plus pro mods, and then you throw something else on top of it, and you really... You really are taxing the game. You're really pushing it well beyond how it, how it was intended to run. But that's half the fun. Uh, and I, and the other half of the fun, well, that would make three halves. Nah, you know what I mean. The other fraction of the fun is building trucks, which we haven't done yet. And I, I don't know how many more episodes it's going to take to get back to France. At least seven or eight, maybe more, but we're going to, we're going to see it through. I, as tempted as I am to fast travel, I feel like, no, we made our deal and I'm going to, I'm going to be disciplined and, and stick to the challenge of doing this the way that we agreed to. So we'll drive all the way back to France and then when we get back there, we'll definitely have enough money. Uh, we should have three to 400,000 euro by then. We'll definitely have enough money, but we'll build the We'll build the Magister MAN, and we'll do that on camera. Like the changes that I just made to this Scania, I did that off camera. It wasn't very exciting. I just shortened the wheelbase, uh, and then you have to repaint. It goes to white when you do anything like that. Pulled some of the driving lights off, and I think I had to pick new side panels, and I sort of on the fence because we're still in in what I think of as long haul mode so when we were 4x2 we had just the, the minimal side protection panels but since we're doing more long haul stuff and out here on the road wanted a few more lights uh, side lights and LEDs and to do that, you need to have a, a side panel in place. The basic protection, simple protection side panel doesn't have a lot of slots for, for lights. And what I'll do is, when we get to our delivery point before I, oh, before I drift off the road, when we get to our delivery point, I will hop out of the truck and do kind of a, a slow look around to show you some of the lights that I've got. Right. It looks and feels very stable here. Now, just as I say that, I'm sure the game will crash, but it, it feels really stable here. And I'm, I'm pleased about that. Crashes are they're so frustrating. Uh, and as quick as the game starts for me, it starts in 60 to 90 seconds, it's still, particularly when you're recording, it's still kind of challenging to, to have the momentum and to have to sort of be in the groove you got your mojo working and then it just absolutely stops it stops in a way that's frustrating uh, any crash is frustrating but then you need to sit there for a minute minute and a half and sort of try to keep your energy up get ready to go right back to it while you're waiting for the game to reload it happens fairly quickly you see it more in live stream than in recording i think because people typically edit it out but it still can be challenging to to keep the energy in a good place you know bring it right back and start recording again. And I always, every evening before I go to sleep, I save my, save all my games for the day. Anything that I've done, uh, I mean, I'll resave even if I haven't done anything, just so I'm sure I got it in there. But that's ATS, ETS, 
Farm Sim 2017 cattle and crops project cars and a set of Corsa. I just drag everything over to a cloud backup that I use. So if the following day, if I'm 20 minutes into a recording and everything goes south, I can just stop, delete that, and Euro Truck auto saves. So I wouldn't be able to, to start the video again from where I was when we started, but if I go get that archive copy, if I go get that archive copy, I can start again from where we were, no problem. And ideally, you never see that and you don't know it. Uh, it's not an ed edit, it's a, it's a do-over, but still, I want that to be seamless to the viewers. I don't want them to have to, you know, I like, I like leaving the fail in, you know that, but there's a difference between leaving the fail in and everybody has a good time and kind of laughs about that and just making really bad videos. That's a whole different thing. Now, as much as I was just crowing about how stable the game is right now, let's see how we do when we get down here to Torneo, where the we crash on a scenery load or not. Primary, it's not bad going into a city. Pleased about that. It looks like it's on the left side, I think. Nope. Well, it is on the left side, but it's. It is on the left side, but it. It's right at the roundabout. So is it here? Yep. A little bit shorter wheelbase. Should make parking easier. And it's the, the regular in between two trailers challenge. Let's see if we're up for it. So we're getting a little picket fence. I need to remember to bump that scaling up to 300%. It's been on my list and I keep forgetting to do it. Right on. So we said we were gonna take a look at this truck. So before we drop this load off, let's take, uh oh, there we go. Let's take a look. Yeah, kind of simple. Uh, I've got the side lights uh, and the marker lights all white in the front, red in the back. Uh, I've got the LED lights around the spoiler through some side lights up on top of the spoiler. And then on the side right in here, on the side panel, I've got the side marker lights and then I've got the yellow Borman LED lights. 
uh, LED fog lights, and then wrong way. There we go. And then LED. Uh, Sorry, uh, fog light high beams, and then the, the yellow driving lights, and then the driving lights up on top, also with LEDs. So yeah, I think it's a it's a pretty good looking truck. I try not to turn it into an Easter egg and just absolutely cover it with crap and goodies, but I do like I like a little style, I like a little swagger on my truck. So that's it. Okay, that was uneventful. Nice simple delivery, folks. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of ETS2, and we will see you next time. Take care.